Okay, welcome to the August 30th edition of ERADS Tips and Tricks. Uh, this is Ralph Stubenrock presenting today. And let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about hanging protocols today. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is just open up a study. Uh, we'll pick this MRI of the knee here. We'll open this up. As you can see, I don't, I have a new user account set up here, so I really don't have any hanging protocols built. Um, our hanging protocol selector is found up here in the top left. And we see we have something by default called Smart Grid. If I click the drop down here, I don't have anything else here to choose from. So I'm going to build a few. Um, I'm going to start with building just a few generic ones. Um, to begin with, we'll, we'll go over some of these tools up here. We've got this grid matrix here, which is the main thing you'll use to change your layout. Um, to, to, if you want to change, you know, how many uh, frames you're displaying. And next to that, we have uh, what's called the, the um, Grid, grid fill mode selector. Um, and right now I have mine set to empty cells. I have four options, empty cells, reuse cells, selected study, and all studies. And they all do basically what they say they do. In, in essence, empty cells means if I pick something up here from the drop down, I'm gonna change this to four and one, it empties it out, okay? Um, reuse cells, let me just drag a few things down here, means that if I have something in the cells already, or in the frames, um, and I have it on reused, like this, change my layout. It it makes sure that it uses whatever's already there. Okay. Then we've got selected study, which basically means whatever study is selected here, it's going to fill in that study. All right. And then if I had a prior study here and chose all study, it would do that as well. It would do all studies. Right now, with since I have no prior, all study is basically the same as selected study. It just kind of fills everything in there. Now you'll notice when I go back to a four on one here. I've got less frames than I have series, okay? Um, what it's done, I've only got one monitor, so I've got one viewer window. If you're a radiologist, you may have multiple monitors. Um, over here, whenever I have more frames than I can see and I have it on selected study or all study, um, it's gonna add an extra, extra monitor here at the upper right-hand corner. You see these little um, tabs up here. There's a one and a two. It's added a second one, and it's basically a virtual monitor. Um, so when you're building hanging protocols, let's say at home you have one monitor, but at the office you have two to use for images. Um, you can still build hanging protocols at home um, and just add a virtual monitor. I can add another manually if I'd like to by hitting the plus sign here. Um, and then I can add different things on there if I wanted to. And if I wanted to build a hanging protocol that encompassed uh, multiple monitors for somewhere else. Typically you won't go in there and use that much, but that's what that does and that's how that works. Um, so let's go back to creating some just basic generic, generic hanging protocols to start out with. Um, essentially, most people don't want to use the smart grid that we have here. Some people do, and all it really does is looks how many series you have and, and then divides the uh, monitors up in a reasonable pattern to fit every um, uh, series on the screen, right? So you see everything within limits. Um, there are limits to how small you can get. Uh, once you hit the max, smart grid's not going to go any bigger than this, right? This is kind of the max choice you have. Um, you're looking at almost like thumbnail-sized images as it stands anyway, so you really wouldn't want to go any smaller. But if you have more series than this, um, you're just going to end up getting virtual monitors. It's not going to fit them in, all right? Um, now, if I wanted to create a hanging protocol, um, but let's say for me I'd rather have four-on-one uh, than six-on-one. I just want that to always open up. Um, no particular order, just the order that thumbnails are displayed in uh, on a four-on-one layout. In order to do something generic that does not look at the series descriptions, okay, um, what you'll do is make sure you have it in, on either all study or selected study, and you'll pick your layout, uh, your format, you want to pick two by two, and then immediately save it without dragging anything or manipulating the images at all, all right? You're going to immediately go up here to this create layout button, this little plus sign, this is your... Um, method to save a new hanging protocol. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to call this two by two, just make it simple. And I'm going to leave this set for all modalities because this is a layout that you may use for pretty much any modality. But for, if you wanted to define this for a particular modality, you just pick your modality type here and um, save it with that modality or multiple modalities, if you will. And we'll do that in a minute as well. Uh, but right now I'm going to just save this generic hanging protocol. And while I'm at it, I may decide I want a couple more. You can see it's added it to the drop down up here. Maybe I want a few more. Uh, maybe I want to have, um, maybe I do like the, I'll call this three by uh, three by two. Maybe, maybe you want a few more, right? Um, so now I've got a couple hanging protocols and let's say for MR, 
I want this to be my default hanging protocol all the time. Okay, for any MR, unless I create a specific hanging protocol for a certain type of study. In order to define a default hanging protocol for per modality or overall in general, um, go to tools, options, hanging protocol, study loading, and most of your settings are going to be in study loading, but the default hanging protocol for MR at the upper right hand corner, we'll see it's pick the modality type that I'm already in, which in this case is MR. I'm going to hit the little um, reset button, if you will, here, which then activates the drop down. And this will give me a list of all the hanging protocols I have in my system, uh, regardless of modality type. Um, and right now I'm going to pick three by two as my hanging protocol that I want to use for all MRs. And let's say for CT, I'd like to use, I can pick the different modality types up here. Say for CT, instead, I would like to use the two by two. All right. So now I've defined a default hanging protocol per modality. Um, so now any other study that I open for an MR is going to open up this three by two hanging protocol. So let me just close this. And let's open this MR of the knee here. Different study. You see it open with a three by two hanging protocol. Um, now let's say maybe I don't like this particular layout for a knee. Okay. Maybe I want to do something different. So maybe I'd like to have, um, Let's say these sagittal views all at the top and this axial down here, this coronal here, and then over here, I'll just put the localizer, right? So maybe I want this to be my hanging protocol for knees, right? So I'm going to create one just for MRI the knee. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to label it MR knee. And I always recommend when you label a hanging protocol, you're going to uh, start with the modality. You're not required to do this, but I like to label the modality because if you want to go manage your hanging protocols later on, um, things are sorted alphabetically. It's easier just to have them grouped together. Um, it's my opinion, but it's, it's not a requirement. So I'm going to go down here now and pick MR as my modality of choice for this hanging protocol because that's what I want it for. If I didn't define a hanging pro uh, a modality here, it would show in my drop down for all the other modalities as well. And there's no sense in having an MR hanging protocol. Um, and we'll click the OK button. Having an MR hanging protocol show up for x-rays, right? It just clutters everything up if you happen to go to your list often and pick things, right? So I've got my new MR knee, uh, knee hanging protocol. So I'm going to close this study. Mr. Simpson here. And I'm going to show you when I open this back up again, it's learned to use the MR knee hanging protocol based on the uh, study description, okay? It's actually based on a couple other things too. Uh, not only the fact that it's MR of the knee, uh, but also that it was done at this institution, uh, Health Bridge Imaging. Um, so if I go up here and open this MR of the knee, which has a different description, uh, and was done at ERAD Imaging Center, it's actually going to open up with my default hanging protocol instead until I tell it, hey, I really want to use MRI of the knee. And once I do this, it changes the rules that are in the background. And you see here, I didn't have a matching uh, series for these two in this study, so we have a couple blanks um, because this study did not have those same sequences in there. Uh, now we do have a, um, and it tells you here what it's looking for specifically. Um, we do have a dictionary based uh, rule set. So if there were something similar or something close enough to match, it would have put it in here as well. So we do um, have some decent matching rules in place. Uh, but in this case, uh, we didn't have anything that showed up that, that uh, ideally matched. Um, so I'm going to close that and I'm going to show you now when I open this back up again, it also is opening with an MR of the knee. Now, that doesn't mean everything that I open is going to open with this hanging protocol. Um, I'm going to now open this with priors, and you're going to see it's still going to open up uh, with my three by two hanging protocol. Uh, that's because another thing that it takes into account, in addition to the institution name and the uh, study description, is how many actual studies you have open. Because this, in this case, now I have a prior. That's another variable because you would have the ability also to create a separate hanging protocol if you like. Um, for priors, right? Most people just like to have one hanging protocol. Um, so what I'm going to do is just pick my MR of the knee hanging protocol again, but I'm going to modify it a little bit. I'm going to say, maybe I didn't like the way it was before, and I'm going to actually modify it to do something to include these priors too, right? So let's redo this hanging protocol. Let's just say, um, we'll put these sagittals here. This has a few more axials. I'll put coronal back down here again, and then we'll put this other axial over here, you know, something like this, right? But let's say I also want to compare, um, let's switch these, move this around. Um, let's say I want to compare to this prior on another screen. I can actually add another page if I like. 
and say, this is going to be my page uh, to compare with, right? So I'm going to just put myself back to uh, six on one or my three by two layout. Um, we'll put the current views that I want up here to, um, well, let's do these sagittals. We'll do this. These sagittals down here. So let's say we want this to be our hanging protocol then for priors on this page. We have two pages. And by default, you can navigate between the pages by using the left and right arrow keys uh, on your keyboard, or you can uh, just click the tab up here as well, if you like, back and forth. I'm gonna just resave my hanging protocol. I'm gonna keep the same one. I still have the same name here. I'm gonna hit the create layout button. It's gonna keep that name that was in there. I'm gonna say, okay. So this is gonna overwrite the hanging protocol. I will get prompted. You know, it's an existing name, do I wanna overwrite it? I'm gonna say yes. And so maybe this is gonna be a better hanging protocol in general anyhow. Um, it doesn't change the rules. Um, it just changes the hanging protocol. So the rules are basically, I don't have to go and teach it again. Hey, for this particular study with no priors or anything, I open it up. So when I close this, we'll see if I just open today's study, the one study, it still uses my mRNA hanging protocol. And if I open it with priors, it's using my mRNA protocol. The goal here is to show you that these rules um, will learn over time. And eventually, I'm going to pick this one uh, here, which doesn't have an imaging center defined. And let's see if it actually opens with my knee hanging protocol. And it did this time. So I didn't have to train it this time. Typically, after you tell it two or three times, uh, this is the hanging protocol I want to use for this type of study, it learns. And then it goes ahead and applies those. So there's some rules in the background. Uh, people get discouraged because they created a hanging protocol and it doesn't open the next MR of the knee that they did. Um, all they have to do is just pick it and then it will remember over time. You know, so two or three times you should be good to go. Um, so now we've, and you can see he's got my second page here, all worked. Uh, this, uh, this doesn't have the prior, so it didn't show anything, but everything else still showed up there. Open it with the prior and we'll see if we've got our second page with everything down here. Let's move on to something different. Let's look at some x-rays. Um, x-rays you may want to load a little bit differently. Uh, so I'm going to open this patient with priors, an x-ray at the ankle. Um, it opened up with my spark grid again, which in case, you know, which moved everything into a, you know, throwed everything up on one big screen and kind of spit it all out here. Some people like this uh, because you can always just double click to fill up, uh, maximize your image. Uh, but some people would rather have uh, more of a one on one type layout. So I'm going to change my layout here and I'm going to create a hanging protocol that's a little bit different. I'm going to um, just do two on one. Let's assume I have two monitors or this is just one monitor. I'm dividing them into two sections here. And I'm going to just drag these off. Uh, so they're not on the screen here and show you how I can make another hanging protocol by stacking these studies, right? So I'm going to stack these by holding the control key down on the keyboard and double clicking here. This is going to stack uh, all these images in a single stack. Now, this does not look at series descriptions. Okay. This is uh, just looking at stacking the entire study here. And I can do the same thing with the prior. It's stacking just this study. Okay. With my prior. Now I can save this. Oh, before I save this, remember the additional page that we added for the, the priors on the other one? I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to um, add another page, but what I'm going to do instead, divide it into two again, is take this off. And by the way, this is filling that in because I have it all, all study. I could have had it on reused cells or empty cells, and it would have been blank for me. I'm going to control double click again on here. It's going to give me a stack for the current study. I'm going to do the same thing again. Control double click. It's going to be another stack for the current study, but I'm going to advance this one space to the next image in the stack. So now I've got two views here. So when I open the study, if I uh, don't have a prior, I can hit my right arrow key and get to the next page and have two two images in the stack, two different images displayed instead. So I'm going to save this hanging protocol. I'm going to just call it uh, global stack. And I'm going to keep this available for all modalities because it may be useful for most modalities. So we'll say, okay. And now I'm going to go into my tools and options and go back to hanging protocols. Study loading. I'm going to go CR. I'm going to go down here. Take my default hanging protocols, set that to my new global stack and any new hanging protocol you ever, uh, whenever you add a new hanging protocol in this drop down, it always puts it at the bottom. Um, so anytime you add a new one, just go straight to the bottom. You can find that there. Now I've added this for CR, um, but I could also do this a different way, right? If I go back here and reset this, 
you see how smart grid is kind of grayed out in the background there is a default setting as well so this is a hanging protocol you may decide to just use as your default because it is kind of a catch-all for most studies other than ct and mr in general and pet ct maybe is another one where you'd use one of those other um setups so what i'm going to do is just change my default to use my new hanging protocol which is global stack and that way if i go back to cr you'll see in the background it's global stack now so all my studies unless I define them explicitly as something else for the modalities, uh, will be that global stack. So while I'm here, I'm going to just go ahead and do PET CT because I know I'm going to want that to be something different, like two by two as well. Uh, so I'm going to say, okay. So now if I close this study, reopen it, I've got my global stack there. This doesn't have a prior because I just opened the one, so there's nothing there. But if I open this one with a prior, it's there for me. I can go to page two and now I've got this over here. So uh, for x-rays, it's nice having this because um, if you open it up, this is kind of an indication to you. Oh, there's no prior. I know you have the thumbnails here too, but you also know, oh, well, there's no prior. Let my hip I right arrow key. And now I've got my stack over here at the next page. So my PA and lateral chest would be here or two different views are here. And then I can still scroll through either one of these and line them up however I like. Um, let's talk about a couple other things. I'm going to find us a MAMO study. And we're going to open up this uh, study with priors. There are some built in hanging protocols for MAMO already. Um, and you know, usually you'll get those loaded up here. We have a couple other stacking options that are actually built into this hanging protocol. This hanging protocol is already built in with a bunch of stuff in it. You can see I'm stacking a few things here. Um, and this study has something um, for MAMO, we have something what's called group thumbnails. Um, and you can do this for any modality, but it really what it's doing is grouping the thumbnails together so you don't have a long list of um, thumbnails going across because there's so many we kind of group them together and these are all grouped here in a, a group and then we're stacking them together right so we have various modes of uh, how we can stack studies um, in this case i'm doing all the let me just uh, go to another page here and we'll look at a current and a prior view over here in this case i'm looking at all the prior uh, images for this one particular series um, the nice part about that is I can, you know, drag down this thumbnail here and go to prior two. Um, so when you set up a hanging protocol with the prior is loaded like that, uh, it allows you to drag in here and do like a next prior, previous prior kind of thing with some keyboard shortcuts if you wanted to as well. But you could also stack all the priors here. If you wanted all the priors of the right CC in one stack, you could do that as well too. So here um, I could go to layout stacks and say um, series stack prior. If I pick this. Now you see I've got all the priors are down here. If I scroll down, if you see the little hash marks here, this is where it goes from one prior to the next. Um, they're all loaded down here behind you, right? So all the priors. There are a lot of uh, other tools up here uh, these, for these stacks. Uh, but this theory stack prior is a good one. Um, and then we have an unviewed stack current, an unviewed stack selected study, unviewed stack prior, a bunch of these here. We usually add the unviewed stack at the end here. And what that does, any any images that you haven't looked at yet right if we go through this whole study here and i go through the pages i'm going to go through a bunch of these just so that uh, they're accounted for and then i'm going to do another unviewed stack okay just to show you um that most it's just going to show you the things that are missing um, so we're going to add a new page what are your tools sorry layout stacks unviewed stack current and you'll see it's still a lot of images that I haven't looked at from this study. I should have gone through it a little bit better. But basically, these are images I haven't scrolled through yet. This particular patient has a lot of tomos. You can see a lot of extra uh, series in there, so I couldn't go through them all. But you can see um, it'll add them all here at the end. So that's a nice tool to add in your hanging protocol is that unviewed stack. Um, so I've gone a little bit over, uh, but that's a quick uh, overview of hanging protocols. There's a lot more you can do with these. Perhaps we'll do another more advanced session later, or um, if you'd like, you can always schedule a time with an ERAD applications uh, application specialist, and uh, we can set up some time and go over hanging protocols in more detail with you if you'd like. So with that, I'm going to uh, stop the video. Stop sharing.